Okay, today we're going to discuss the Stalker Dual. Some people call it the Stalker Dual SL. It's all the same thing. The SL stands for same lane. At one time, they only made uh, the Dual and they sold the SL extra, but now they're all Stalker Dual SLs. Uh, basic function of this uh, radar is you turn it off and on with the green button. And when it powers up, it's going to show all eights. And then, if, and then I can hit the uh, self-test on the remote. And I'm going to show battery voltage, temperature inside the radar. And then it's going to go through three speed tests and show pass. And if you get that pass and the happy tone, then everything's okay. That means the antennas and all that are hooked up. Right now, we're just running the front antenna. If I uh, could select the antenna here on this remote to rear, it's uh, not hooked up, so it's blinking. So anyway, um, on the front of the radar, there's no controls. Everything else is on, except for the on-off switch. Everything else is on the remote. So I showed you the self-test. Uh, basically lights up all the lights, make sure everything's working. Notice that fork mode there, light. At this particular time, after you hit test on the radar, you can use tuning forks, but you cannot use tuning forks any other time because this is a directional stalker dual and it will not recognize tuning forks unless you hit the test button first. Then you have 30 seconds or a minute to use your tuning forks and you'll get a reading. A lot of people try to use the tuning forks um, other times and say, wait a minute, my radar works fine, but I just and I can't pick up any tuning forks. Well, that's because the fork light is not lit up on the radar by you having push test. The other, the other buttons on the remote, you got the lock release, up on top, the antenna we showed you, front and rear, um, moving and stationary. When you have it in stationary only, you're going to get, you're going to see speeds just in the target window, nothing in patrol. When you put it in moving, you'll see brackets at first, and then if they're, if you're actually driving, it's going to show your patrol speed. Well, I'm sitting still, so it's showing the traffic as my patrol speed. We'll, we'll get into moving mode here in just a second. The lock release button, when you push that, it locks in whatever you had last on the radar, and then it continues to show um, the actual traffic until you lock again, and then you're going to get the actual traffic at that particular instant. So anyway, um, Transmit hold. When you when you put this in hold, you're not transmitting a signal at all, and you're showing brackets in the patrol window. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the stationary because we are stationary. Um, so once I take this out of hold, it instantly shows a car, and then I can lock them in. We're getting a little bit of fan interference here off the fan. See that 19 switching in? That's the actual fan in the vehicle. That's one thing you need to look for. Whenever nothing's coming, it's going to show that fan, that fan reading. And that's true with every radar out there. Okay, we're showing the actual speed of the oncoming traffic. And notice I got the fast light on. So it's showing the fastest car in that pack of cars. I'm going to go ahead and turn the fast off. And at this point, I can read the stationary. I'm stationary and I'm reading the car is coming toward or going away. Um, you have a sensitivity one through five, one through four, I mean. You want to leave that on four unless you're having trouble uh, with the ghost readings. Uh, your patrol speed, 520. Leave that on 20 unless you're patrolling below 20, then you can put it on 10. If you're patrolling below 10, you can put it on five. But don't leave it in anything below 20 because you will get phantom patrol speeds 
uh, like just things moving, the fan in the car and all that will show up. And so they do that to filter out all the lower readings so you don't get a false patrol speed. Um, the light button on the remote, you turn that on and it lights up the remote, but it also turns just the brightness if you push it over and over again of the display. So you want to run that, you can, I think it dims down at night, but uh, you want to, you can adjust that brightness. If you, if it's too bright, you can adjust it way down for nighttime operation. I think we covered the squelch button. That all that is is the it, it mutes the audio when there's no targets coming, so you don't hear the static and all in between cars. So just leave that squelch on all the time. Self test or the volume. This your audio. You can have that up. I would suggest maybe leave it on one or something, so you can hear the audio and you can discern which car it's picking up by listening to the audio and comparing that to the reading. You see it's starting to get staticky. That means the car is getting further away. That type of thing. Self-test. Everything should light up. Showing. And it should show 10, 35, 65 and the important thing it says pass and gives you the the tone that lets you know that everything's hooked up and working if you get a fail that means you probably got a loose connection somewhere okay we were in stationary and uh, now we're going to go to moving it's showing 25 uh, which is just my fan for moving and once i get to moving that will disappear and it'll start tracking my patrol speed. Okay, I'm doing about 30 mile an hour and that's working. Now it's showing oncoming traffic. If I have this in same, same, it's showing the car in front of me. But if I have it the same light off, that's the opposite direction. That's the vehicles coming toward us, as such as the case up here where you see my patrol speed. Actually, that thing is, still locked into the fan so i just killed the fan for the purpose of this illustration and it's showing my patrol speed at 54 and it's showing the oncoming traffic these cars as they're going by i bump the audio up a little bit So if I want to pick up that car in front of me, then all I have to do is hit the same opposite button and the same is lit up and I'm just picking up the car in front of me now. Okay, we're going back to opposite. Notice all that noise hit my squelch button that goes away that's the purpose of your squelch button the stalker dual has very good sensitivity and you can get some interference from your fan and things like that which you may need to turn off in a case where you're trying to read a car really far away and you're picking up some interference from the fan the fan is basically uh, like a tuning fork and it uh, will pick the rotation of that fan up in the car just like it picks up the vibration of a tuning fork so there's nothing wrong with the radar if you're getting a bogus reading when nothing's coming it's probably interference from the fan we're going to get out on a, a little bit better road here. There's not so much traffic. That This road is really high in traffic, and it's hard to really see the range of the radar or anything with that. Now we're in moving mode, and uh, we're on a little bit less crowded highway, and it's showing our patrol speed at 35. And notice that car, you hear the audio drop off and then the reading drop off. We've already got a little something coming around the corner there. There's a car there barely in sight and it's already got him picked up at 54 mile an hour. This is a 55 zone. I'm 
going to put it on fastest car uh, for a little bit. Now the middle window, instead of being a lock window, is a fast window. So if there's a car that's moving faster than the upfront car, it'll show up in the fast window. If the upfront car is the fastest car, you won't get anything in the fast window. So now we got that guy's 56, someone behind him doing 65. Now he's the upfront car. We got that school bus just at the very top of the, as he started the top of the hill. Notice we got a car way down there at 54. I've already got him in, uh, and I can hit my lock button and lock him in. And that's what you pull him over as. As you can see that car coming, 52. Okay, we got um, sometimes if you're not getting a reading on the target it's because your speed and the and the target is the same and the radars are all set to blank out any speed that's exactly your speed because that could be a ghost reading if the radar is just picking up your speed um, as the target speed so almost always if you see uh, that you hey I should be reading this car um, and you're not it's because your speed is exactly matching his speed so just speed up a little bit or slow down uh, we're gonna see if we can get this guy in front of us now in the same direction so I'm gonna put the radar in same and your range isn't as good in the same because of the fact that you can get a lot of ghost reading. So he's doing 43 up there, 42. So go back to opposite and this is oncoming traffic again. Okay, I think that probably uh, concludes the basic operation of the radar. You'll get that beep, 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 beep. That's the radar self-testing every 15 minutes. So that means everything is working fine. If there was something wrong with the radar and does a self-test, it'll come up and say, say fail.